Hello and welcome to the FlexMLS webinar using the FlexMLS Pro app on an iOS device. This is the eighth webinar in the portal series. In this webinar we'll review how to download and log into the agent side portal for a contact using the FlexMLS Pro from an iPhone. And how to navigate the information and functions available to the agent. So let's get started. To download the FlexMLS Pro app from an iPhone you'll want to go to the App Store. And in the search menu you want to click in the search, search bar and enter in Flex MLS Pro and search. And up here, this is going to be the first option, the Flex MLS Pro. That's going to be the one that our agents are going to want to download, okay? This Flex MLS, that's for the consumers to use. So once you download this, you'll want to open it up and it'll pull up your login screen. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in my information, then you'll click Login. And right away it takes us to the search page, okay? Down here we have a toolbar, we have a search function, we have a hot sheets function, contacts, collections, and then some more additional functions. So right away on this search page here we have a quick launch bar up at the top. This quick launch bar you can use to search for anything, whether it's an MLS number, a street address, a municipality, county, zip code, whatever it might be, it'll find whatever relates to that search that you enter in. So if I were to search within Waukesha, this would then pull up some different property types I could search within Waukesha, as well as some addresses that fall within Waukesha. If I were to narrow down this criteria, it would give me some more results. So to go back, I'm going to click Cancel. I could do a brand new full search from scratch. I could do a search via address or MLS number if I knew it. I could see what my recent searches were, what my favorites were, and any saved searches I might have. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the new search up here. Right away it takes us to a map here. And on this map we have our blue dot. That's indicating where we lay on the map. This indicates it by using the location settings when it's turned on. And we are able to see a lot of results on this screen. In fact, 7248, that's because it's using whatever criteria we have entered in and placing whatever matches it on our map here. Now since we don't have any criteria entered in at the moment, that's why we have so many results. So we can filter out those results and weed them down by clicking on this filter button up here in the right hand corner. And this allows us to enter in a certain location that we want to search within, as well as statuses, property types, uh, Metro or YRX, and then some additional fields down here. So if we wanted to search on list price, we would go ahead and turn this on, and then we would enter in a list price range. So I'm searching within 100,000 to 200,000. Okay, and then I'll click Done. And now it shows me my new result number of 2,200. So if I scroll through here and add in additional information, it will narrow down that result number. If I don't see a field in here that I want to use, I can actually click on this Add a Field option down here and find that field and add it. So if I want to scroll through this list and find it, I could. Otherwise, I could click inside the search bar and find that field that way too. So I'm going to click Done to go back. And if I want to reset these criteria back to zero, I could click on the Reset button. I'm going to go ahead and click Close. I can also change the way I view the map via satellite view or standard view by clicking on this option down here in the bottom right. And if I chose satellite view right here, I click done, I can then view this map via satellite. I can actually do a combination of the two as well by choosing this hybrid view, choosing done, and now I'm able to see a satellite view and a standard view mixture. Right, I'm going to go back and change it to standard view. Over here we have a draw icon. This allows us to create a shape on our map to search within. So if I want to click on that, that'll then clear out all my results on my screen so it doesn't compromise my shape when I'm creating it. To create a shape, you want to find a spot on your map to begin creating your shape. So in this case, I'm going to create a circle, like a radius around my area here where I lay. And I'm going to just kind of start up here at the top and I'm going to work my way around the shape, okay? So by starting that, I'm going to place my finger on my map where my mouse is, and I'm not going to take it off my screen of my phone. I'm just going to leave it there, and I'm going to drag it. So you'll notice as I drag my finger around the map, the blue line follows. And it doesn't have to be perfect, and you don't have to actually meet both ends completely to create the end creating the shape, because if once you let go of the screen, it will cap it off for you. However, if you overlay the lines, it will give you an error message saying you have to recreate your shape. So if I were to let go of my, my screen right now, it would then create that gap, it would cap off that gap for me to end my shape. 
Okay. If I wanted to delete this shape and create a new one, I could just click on this X button right here. So now I see that I have nine results in here, and it's giving me the house icon, where they lay, and then the price range. So if I were to click on this icon here, this would then pull up that listing for me with the primary photo as well as some additional information. First we see that it's got the price, the address, the status. If you ever see this Y here next to active, that means it has contingency, so it's active with offer. Okay. So if I clicked on this three dotted icon here, this would pull up a share page. So it allows me to share it via text message or email if I want to. I can recommend it to my contact. I can get some showing info on it. I could select it. I could hide it. Or I could add it to another collection. So I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here. And to get out of this view, I can click anywhere on my map. Okay. Now, if I wanted to view these listings in more of a, a column format so I could see all their pictures, I could do that two different ways. I could click on this single list view. So I clicked on that one. That then gives me the primary photo, and it gives me the price range as well as the address and all some additional information. If I wanted to view more information on this listing instead of just a brief description, I could click on this blue link of the address. And that would pull up a separate screen for all the primary information, which includes the driving directions, documentation, history, tax info, listing members, etc. I could share this listing. I could recommend it. I could get some showing info. Or I could get all those options as well by clicking on the share icon down here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and click X here. So then I could just scroll down my screen here and look at the next listing if I wanted to. And if there's multiple photos on the listing, you can actually just swipe through them right here. And if you wanted to get full screen photos, you could just tap anywhere on the photo, and that would pull them up via full screen. To get out of here, you can either swipe down on your screen, or you can tap anywhere on the photo, and that would pull up this Done option, and you can click on that to take you back. Okay. Lastly, I'm going to go over this multiple list view. And now we're able to see just the thumbnail primary photo with the address, which is clickable, the price range in that share option. We're also able to sort this out in different ways instead of price high to low by clicking anywhere in this title. And we can do new or recently changed first, price low to high, status, etc. I'm going to go back to results. Finally, up here we have a couple different options like this three dotted option, which allows us to select the listings. We can save them or we can add to favorites. All right, I'm going to click cancel. And then we have a share option up here as well. And in order to share it, you need to have a saved search. So you'd have to save it and then share it. And you'd want to start that by giving it a name. So I'm going to click cancel there. All right, so now that takes me onto the hot sheets function down here. In this function, this shows us all the listings that have been entered in the MLS within the last 24 hours that fall in specific categories. So whatever has been entered in the last 24 hours, that is a new listing. If it's price changed, if it's back on the market, if it's closed or sold, if it's pending, expired, withdrawn, or coming soon, or delayed. We don't do canceled anymore. That's why it's zero. So if I want to see what all the new listings are in the last 24 hours in MLS as a whole, I can click on that title. And again, I'm able to sort these out in different ways if I want to. I can view these different ways if I want to. This is showing me all the listings within the entire MLS. If I wanted to see all the new listings within a specific area, I could click on this filter option, and this allows me to enter in that specific area. Okay, And I can also determine which property type I want to see as well, or if I want to see within WireX too. Okay? And this today is telling me that's within the last 24 hours. Any changes that I've made, I can always reset back if I want to. So I'm going to click Close, and I'm going to click Hot Sheets to take me back. Now, if I wanted to see all these categories within a specific area, and not just one of them, I could come up to this Filter option and do the same thing like I did before, just enter in a specific area. All right, I'm going to click Close. And I can always refresh these numbers to see if they change at all by clicking on the Refresh icon. Next, I'm going to go over the contacts. Here we have my list of contacts. We can search for specific ones by typing in their name, or I can scroll through and find them. Beneath each name, we have their last activity date. And then up here at the top right, we have a plus sign and a refresh sign. The plus sign allows us to add a new contact. So I'm going to go ahead and click, oops, I'm sorry, click on that. And now here we're able to add in that email address, which is required. We can also add in a first name, a last name, a phone number if we want to, and then we would just save that. So we can click Cancel to take us back. And if I want to work upon any contacts, I would just click on their name. So I'm going to click on this one here. 
Now this gives me the contacts name. It gives me the newsfeed listings that have popped up in their newsfeed, uh, any collections they might have, any searches that I might have set up for them, messages between the contact and I, as well as their primary email address. If I want to send them an email via my email link, I could just click on that email right there. If I wanted to make any changes to the contact, I could do so by clicking on the edit option up here. And this allows me to make those changes and or delete the contact. And I'll just save the changes. I'll click cancel. To see the news feed listings, I would just click on the news feed title. And this would show me all the listings that popped up in the news feed and why they are in there and when they were in there. I'll go back. I can see their collections. So if they have any listings that are in the saved collection, recommended by me, or any hidden listings, I can view all those. I'll go back. I can view their searches I have set up for them. Here is their search names as well as a green dot indicating if there's a subscription set up. So if I click on this one up here, this allows me first right off the bat to filter out their search. If I want to make any changes to their search criteria, I could click on that filter option. It would show me all their criteria so far and I can make changes accordingly. Okay, so I'm going to close out of that. If I wanted to cancel their subscription, I could simply click on this button to turn it off. Okay, so I'm going to go back to searches here. I'm going to go back once more. And lastly, if I wanted to view any messages between the contact and I, I could just click on that title there. And this shows me any login notifications as well as any messages they may have sent me or I them. And I could create a new one by clicking on this new message icon down here. And this would pull up a new message screen. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel and back once more. Next, I'm going to go over the collections function. So this shows me all of my collections I have as an agent. I can delete any of these by clicking on the edit option and I can delete those accordingly. Click done. I could select them all if I want to and I can view whatever listings appear in each of those collections. So if I click on this one here, I'm then able to see all the results that match that collection. Okay, and I can share them, I can recommend them, or I can individually share them just by clicking on these icons here. I'll go back here. And lastly, I'm going to go over the more function. This one offers me, right at the top here, my primary information. So any agent listings, any office listings, the phone number, I can call or text, uh, email link, as well as a physical address. I'll go back here. Next, I have all of my messages, so any messages sent between me and anyone else within FlexMLS will be found here, and I can create a new one again by clicking on that icon. Go back. If I want to do a member search, I could do so by clicking on members, and I can search for that agent in here. My listings, if I had any listings and I clicked on that, that would show me all my listings. I can enable a touch ID, which means if I turn this on, that would mean instead of logging in by entering in my username and password every time, it would just take a, a screen of my thumbprint and that would log me in right away. Now that works for iPhone 6 and above, I believe. I'm not sure if the iPhone 5 has the thumbprint icon. Send us feedback. If I clicked on this link, what it does is opens up an email and it would send to our programmers with feedback on the iOS. Okay. Go to click cancel and delete the draft. I can rate the app, and this would rate it in the App Store. And lastly, I can log out if I want to. So that's going to wrap it up for navigating through the Flex MLS Pro app. Thank you for watching.